Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 263. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 261 to 264. Hey, in this trick here, we want to see how to do some uh, function of x math equations, data points chart, and we want to add a line that goes from wherever the max is down to the x axis. And we also want to see how to link our formulas uh, to cells. So when we change our inputs, everything will change. Let me show you what I mean here. If we change this to 4, watch this, this change, the chart will change, these um, formulas creating our formulas will change. So I'm going to change this to 4, hit enter. You can see how now that shows a 4, that shows a 4 here. All of these numbers over here change. If I change this to 100, before I hit enter, watch down here. You know the chart ch changes dramatically. Now that um, equation on the chart as a label changes. These change, and all the data points change. So let's see how to do this. I'm going to delete uh, these uh, charts and the formulas, and we'll start from scratch. All right, first I want to create actually the. Um, the formula here which we'll use as a label but it's got to be linked to all these inputs and it's got to be linked to that Q right there so ready equals I'll say click on here actually let me show you how I built this one first because this is based on this because if we change this to an X or a Y we want everything to change also so if I click right here equals and now we're going to use create a text formula in quotes we're going to say F and then open parentheses, end quote. So, so far now, our formula just has in quotes an F and open parentheses. And we're going to use the join symbol. That is Shift 7. It's called the ampersand. That's how you join things, text, and things from cells. So now I clicked on B18. And now I'm going to ampersand. And then in quotes, close parentheses. So now when I hit enter, that says f of q. Now if I change this to x, that says f of x. Now we come up here. Our label for our equation is going to be f of q. And then we're going to join. And our uh, equation, it, we're going to start off with, in quotes, minus, and then parenthesis, parenthesis. You can kind of see it down here. We have a minus, a parenthesis, and parentheses. And then we have whatever our x is right there. So I'm going to end, double quote, an ampersand, and I'm going to join it with that. That way, if we change this to an x or something, this will change also. And then ampersand, and now we need to minus. And so we have to put in quotes, minus. And now we need to come up and get this. So we have to put N double quote ampersand. Click on the 3. So and if you're looking down here, we got all the way to this 3 now. Now we need that uh, parentheses and the caret. So ampersand and then in double quotes, close parentheses, caret. And now we need to end that part. That part is the text. Anything in quotes is text. And we need to ampersand and get the 2. Next, we need to have a close parentheses right there and a plus. So we have to ampersand and in quotes, close parentheses, plus, end, double quote, ampersand, because now we're going to join this 200. All right, let's hit, see if that works. Sure enough, and now if we change this to 4, that updates. Now, let's go down and build our values because we need values to, and I have actually done one here already that not only uh, did what we did up here, and you can come look at this when you download it, but it also uh, gives us the answer all in one uh, for all of our x's or q's. Now, this is an easy formula that most of us know how to do if we do math in Excel, much easier than the uh, text ones. So it's going to be equals and minus sign double parentheses, and now we have to click on our x value. And we want minus, and this variable right here. Now this needs is going to be used in every one of these formulas as we go down. So we need to lock it, and we're going to use the F4 key. Close parentheses, and then caret, and we're going to click on our 2, and we're going to lock that with our F4 key. Those dollar signs say, hey, lock this cell reference no matter what, whereas this is a relative. So as we copy it down, it'll move to each new Q. 
and close parentheses plus our 200. And that needs to be locked also with the F4 key. Now we can hit Control Enter. And then we can double click and send our value. Why? So we have values to the left, so we can simply point to that little fill handle. And when we see our crosshair or angry rabbit, you can double click and send it down. Okay, so now we use the Q's and the F of Q's to make our chart. I'm going to highlight these first two cells and hit Control Shift down arrow to automatically highlight down to the bottom of the current range. And now um, we need to do a scatter. So I'm going to go up to Insert. Scatter. In earlier versions, you have to open up Chart Wizard and select Scatter on the step one. Why don't we select uh, this one right here? And so now we get a chart. I'm going to actually point to the edge of this one. When I see that cursor, I'm going to hold Shift to move this proportionally, make it a lot smaller. See if I can't size this screen. Right, so that's a little bit better. I'm going to click on this label. We're going to change. I'm just going to hit delete because we're actually. I'm going to show you how to use the legend as a label. Now we have this. Now the trick is how do we find the max value and drop a line from the up here all the way down to this axis here. Well, we need to create a new data series with a Q and an F of Q and plot them. Well, all we need is the max value and for F of Q and a zero for F of Q. The X value will just be the same for all of the, uh, I'm sorry, the Q value will be for the same for all of the F of Qs. I should just change this to X. I always think in F of X. Oh, isn't that cool? See how everything updated? Oh, that's beautiful. Even there updated. So it's going to be X equals to whatever value this is. Well, we, we have to find what the max is of all the F of X. That'll give us the max up here, right? And then whichever the max is, correspondingly, we jump over here, and that'll tell us what uh, x should be equal to. So x equals 3 looks like it would be it. But we want to do it in a dynamic way, so as we change the data, um, the max will change. So first off, we have to notice that the um, f of x is going to be always 0, because that's what we've defined here. We just want it from wherever the 0 point is on the... Uh, f of x to the max. Now the max is easy. We'll just use the max function. Ready? How about equals max? And then I'm going to highlight over here the very top there and hit control shift down arrow. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key. I don't need to lock it, but what's nice about the F4 key is it jumps the screen back in view. And then I'm going to close parentheses and enter. So we got 200. Now, how do we do this dynamically? Well, now we have established with a function, this will always look through this list, right? This list here. So no matter how we change these variables, if I change this to uh, 2.5, so now 199.75 is the max. If I change this to 100, so now it's 99.5. If I change this to 3, now it's the 2,500. So we need to dynamically, uh, um, we, got it, we got the max, which will dynamically find the max. But we need to somehow find uh, a way to get the x value for both of these. Now I'm going to control Z to undo that, to get back to that. <coughs> and what we're going to do is simply the index function. Because we know 200 from here. So there's a whole array of values right here. If we know where to find the position in one array, that, then we can simply use the index to find the corresponding value in this array. Now, we can't use VLOOKUP here because we're looking to the left. So we're going to use index. There's lots of ways to do this, but this is one way. I'm going to click in this cell right here, type equals index. And all the index does, if you can read this uh, screen tip, is all you need is an array and the row number. Well, look at this. <clears throat> we can find the row number because we have a way. We have a max function telling us that's what it is. And so we can use something called the match, M-A-T-C-H. You know, like match.com when you're trying to find your honey. Match function will tell us which of all these positions is the max. It'll tell us that that's row number or whatever it is here. And then the index will use that to come over and get the three. So you ready? The array for the index is going to be our x values, because that's what we're trying to retrieve. I'm going to click on that top cell, Control-Shift-Down-Arrow, and then F4. 
And now we need to use uh, for a row, comma, since we don't want to do it by hand each time, we'll let the match function, M-A-T-C-H. And it needs a lookup value. Well, that's just our <coughs> maximum value. Now, I can't click on it because my formula is hanging out here. But I can click right there and then use my down arrow. And you can kind of see it behind there. So uh, H16. And I want to hit F4 on that, too. Comma. And then the lookup array is this. Click on the top one, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then F4. And we're going to comma uh, 0 for exact match and close parentheses. Now let me just show you what this does. You can, in the middle of a formula, highlight part of it and then hit the F9 key. See, 14, that's exactly the ordinal position of the number 200. Control Z. Since we did it with a match, looking at that maximum there, this will always update. And then it, using this corresponding value here, it will always retrieve the right X. I'm going to Control Enter and copy it out. Before we add this data set here to our chart to get our extra line, let's just test it. Let's change this to 2.5. And sure enough, that worked, and these numbers also worked. Is that not totally awesome? Look at that. So 100 and Nine. Okay, so these numbers look like they're being, need to increase the decimal. Yeah, so there's lots of decimals here. But 199, what is it, 199 point, probably right there. We better increase the decimals again to see and then increase the size of this. Oh, there it is, 75. Oh, so we got a 99, 75, 99. We got a hundred. Looks like we have a duplicate here for this one. Hundred. It finds the first one when you're using match exact value. So it found this one right here. Even though, in fact, these values, if we increase the, uh, nope, they're, they look like they're all the same. Now for us, that won't matter so much because we only have a few of them, and we're do. It'll give us a good approximation on our line. We could use. There are uh, much more complicated array formulas that could deal with those duplicates. Let's scroll over here so we have our values. Now the whole trick to the scatter diagram and adding the second one is you can't, a lot of times you can highlight data, copy it, and then paste it on the chart, but you can't do that with this um, scatter diagram. In fact, we'll copy it and see what it does. Control C, click here, and Control V. Yeah, it doesn't work at all. Control Z. In earlier versions, you could just click on the edge and drag it. So we actually have to manually add this. I'm going to go to Design, and then Select data. In 2003 and earlier versions, you had to go to step two of the wizard to add data. I want to click add. In fact, before I do anything, I want to click edit here. And I want to click right here. And I actually want to change the series name. And I want to give it uh, this right here. Click OK. Click OK. That's a cool way of getting uh, that. that uh, formula linked onto the chart. Now one other thing before we do the uh, add that series, we better add a chart label for that one too. And what is it? Equals, and we'll go over and get our f of x, ampersand and double quote space equals space double quotes ampersand. And we simply click on this cell right here because x is going to be the same. So that's our f of x equals 2. Now let's add our second set of data. Go up to Design, Select Data. We're going to click Add this time. The series name, we're going to click right there. X values, we have our X values right there. Now you got to be careful when you see this equals array 1. You want to highlight it and hit the Delete key, make sure it's gone, and then highlight these two values. And sure enough, immediately you can see we got what we want. Click OK, click OK. So there it is. Um, it took a bunch of steps, and now we have a complete. Oh, the well, last thing is we want to right click this and uh, format legend at the bottom, and we want to say show at top. There we go, that's much better. And you could increase the font size if you want to uh, 14. Um, and now we have a totally dynamic situation. Everything here, here, and up here will change. If I change this to 3, sure enough, it's changed there. The chart changed. The values here changed. The max value changed. Absolutely beautiful. This is how you want to do uh, your uh, charts in Excel. All right, we'll see you next trick.